Welcome to the Houdini Hulai Challenge Series. So, SideFX is holding a challenge where artists create a piece per day based on a daily topic every day for the month of July. I have decided to take on the challenge and also record and edit all of my work so that you get to see the process behind it. I'm doing this because I like a good challenge. So, let's get into it. Today is day... Oh, why do I keep saying today? I'm still doing this thing of today is. It's not today. Um, I am covering day 24. Ancient, going through the file. So this one actually came out kind of cool. Um, I think it looks cool. I don't know. Maybe you disagree. Um, it didn't win, but I'm still happy with it. It looks kind of like a shot from a movie. The whole idea was, um, you know, if there were pyramids on some other alien planet, what would they be like? Maybe they'd be upside down. So I was like, yeah, upside down pyramids. Let's Let's do that. So this pyramid is actually physically correct. It's they're accurate to how the real pyramids are. Here is the start of the pyramid. They're 224 by 139 by 224. How crazy is that? Each side is 224 meters and the highest point is 139 meters. That's insane. Like I was busy working on this and it's at some point it becomes hard to believe, okay, I don't subscribe to the alien thing, but man, like, elves maybe? Like, like Dobby. I, there's, it's crazy to think that humans made them. Yeah, so anyways, this is what it looks like. VDB from Polygon, that. Um, points from volume, right? So you end up with a nice grid of points. Then slightly transform the original pyramid down, group the inside points, blast those away. Right, once you've blasted those away, you just have that. You can copy boxes to those points. Each one of these is also the size of one of those blocks. They were two meters by two meters, I believe. Each one was like three tons. It's wild. And then I do some stuff on the other side to generate these kind of worn areas. I paint some areas, blasting only sections, VDB from Polygon, combine it. You end up with this sort of thing and then Boolean it from the original. So you end up with worn edges like that, but a smooth um, surface. Do you guys know that the original pyramids were like pure white and they had this, this cap on the top? It wasn't gold, but it was a, a metallic cap. But I think since then, you know, wear and tear, they're not what they once were. But back then, man, that must have been insane to see. So then, yeah, some noise and stuff. Merge it together with the original, add normals, flip it upside down. Boom, pyramids. Then I have this big fog over here. So this is for um, volumetrics, basically just that sort of um, fog in the air. But if I take it away, you can see what's left behind. So I made a dune. It's just um, a curve that gets skinned. It's not anything crazy. And then I also just ran a very basic pop simulation so that it looks like there's some sand blowing over it and a very, very tiny Tommy, tiny, tiny Tommy. He looks like uh, One Punch Man. So I thought if anyone actually looks at it, it'll be kind of cool to give you an idea of scale. But um, background has a grid. It's just like a sky grid. I used the same cloud gen. I've disabled it. Yo, guys, this, this is a dangerous node. I must have been out of my mind to create something like this. It's like a for each loop that runs over like 39 instances of clouds. It takes like, like a good five minutes to run. 
And for some reason I decided not to cache it. This was my redemption arc, where I got to try and um, improve on the clouds since the uh, sky entry. I don't think I did. These clouds were also like not amazing. They were better though. But the other thing is the terrain. The terrain was fun. I like the terrain. Very basic. I just needed dunes. So you height field, height field noise to basically give a rocky terrain. You blur it so it smooths. And then you do an erode with um, thermal. So you don't do one where it's like a lot of rain because I wouldn't really give you what you're looking for. You can see there's very little precipitation. Kind of just wears it away. Convert that to a geometry and you just have some nice dunes. What all of that looks like when rented out and if you switch on this cloud thing, if you're brave enough to switch on the cloud thing, this is what you end up with. And I'll show you the comp. So it came out looking like this and you know, it's pretty cool. There's Tommy standing over there, got some clouds. You know, these clouds were a lot better. It's the same setup from the sky. So you can see that this time I changed some render settings and I got it looking good. I, it, it wasn't necessarily the setup. It was just me not knowing how to render it. But yeah, you can see the dunes and all of that. You can see that that one in the background is very silhouetted and that's largely because of that um, fog that I have. So then you post-process this to make it a bit brighter. Make it look more like an afternoon scene. Once again, just redshift post effects. You can see that I tried to bring out the red in the sand, make it like more orange and impactful, make the sky a bit more blue. So you can see without the LUT, it looks like that. With the LUT, it looks like this. I think it's got a very cinematic look. You can see the dust over there. And yeah, that's all that goes into this one. And then it gets output. Right, so hope you enjoyed this one. I'll be back soon with day 25. Day 25 was underground. I went for something a bit different. You'll see it soon. I'll see you later or tomorrow. Bye.